Hello everyone and welcome to Life in Camera. We do all things photographic. Today we are going to look at how we can use Affinity Photo to convert an ordinary colour image to a stunning black and white image. Please watch on. We are starting with this basic and simple image of a church. This was taken on uh, the west coast of Ireland in a small town. Um, First of all, I always like to analyse the image before I make any decisions. So I take a bit of time looking to see what steps need to be taken. We will see here that the yellow parts of the cloud show that we have some clip tones. This is down to the image being overexposed and it's basically very flat looking. Also looking closer, we can say that the church isn't quite straight. It is leaning very slightly to the right and we need to correct that. We have a certain number of distractions on the uh, left hand side. Uh, we have a, a, a small white mark and a, a small building we'd like to remove. We have a low wall along the bottom which is distracting and we have more gravestones along the right hand side and we need and we plan to remove those. The sky is plain. We have some dust spots apparent, uh, which we will need to tend to. But overall, we have an underexposed image, which needs a certain amount of work to turn it into a much better black and white image. Skies like this can look dramatic, but they do detract from the rest of the image and they are much more suited to black and white work. We are starting by reducing the exposure. We can see by taking it down several notches in the basic panel that we get a much more balanced feel to the light in the image and there's instant improvement. I always like to set a black spot of about um, 5%. It works well for me. Uh, you may have a different preference, but I like to set my black uh, point at uh, 5 before I work any farther. I will then take some time adjusting the shadows and highlights. Uh, in this case, the shadows aren't really a problem, so a small adjustment does help bring out a little bit more detail, but uh, it's not a strong requirement. Whereas when we work with the highlight, we can see by sliding in different directions, we get a much more dramatic sky. And there's a large improvement to begin by reducing the impact of the highlights. Adjusting the clarity produces a little bit more sharpness uh, in the image. But as you see, if we take it too far, the sky definitely looks unnatural. So a small adjustment in clarity is beneficial, but uh, we don't go too far with that. And as with most images, you, you do benefit from uh, increasing the exposure a little bit. We don't want to take it too far. You can see here from the... Uh, yellow appearing on the bush on the bottom right hand side and in the clock tower that um, too much increase in exposure uh, increases the uh, shadows. We can try to reduce that uh, by going back to the shadow slider and it does help but it doesn't remove it entirely on the bottom right corner. However, as previously discussed, we are planning to crop this area. So at this stage, I'm not going to worry any more about that. Once we have cropped this, then it will not be a problem. 
we will now return our attention to uh, the, the um, straightness of the church and also to removing distracting details around the edges. We will use the crop tool and by using the straighten tool the plan is to draw a straight line along the wall of the church and then the tool will take care of straightness and produce a fully perpendicular wall. We now need to uh, move the edges and remove distractions around the edges. Uh, this includes the uh, building and white stone on the left hand side, which is now outside of the cropped area. On the left hand side, we'll remove several of those gravestones uh, and other distractions, including the bush. We will remove the wall on the, from the bottom of the image which is drawing the eye away and furthermore once we develop that we now find that all these distractions have disappeared and the wall of the church is absolutely straight. I'm now very happy with that so the plan is to develop the raw image and then we will continue with further changes in the and further refine, refinements in the normal panels. So far we have taken our raw file and improved a plain flat overexposed image. We will now do our remaining refine, refinements in the photo persona area of Affinity Photo. We have our converted raw file. The first thing we should do is make a copy of this. We don't want to lose our original file at any time. It is also a good idea to give the copy a name so we don't confuse the two. We should also rasterize the copy as many of the changes that we wish to implement uh, do require this rasterization process before they can be implemented. First of all, we look at the histogram. The histogram shows that we have a, a space on the right hand side and improvements can be made by taking our white slider and bringing it across adjacent to the edge of the histogram. It's a minor tweak but it definitely improves the image. We look at the left hand side and the black levels are absolutely fine. Further improvements can be achieved by adjusting the gamma by a, a small degree. It improves the contrast, a minor factor but it definitely helps the image. next step that we are going to take is that we will now adjust to make the black and white adjustment. Once we click on this uh, adjustment we will see that the sky goes very very plain and drab. Just not what we want. But you will notice the individual sliders uh, that will improve each colour channel. The sky is mainly blue and cyan so by adjusting these uh, channels we can improve the sky dramatically. Taking the blue levels down increase, uh, darkens the blue areas and increases great contrast in the sky and adjusting the cyan level improves this even further. We've now gone from a very plain sky to a very dramatic sky. Other colour adjustments uh, in this case are minor. The red uh, adjustment makes a little bit of difference to the uh, stonework of the church. So we'll make a small adjustment uh, to that. These are all very personal uh, and to each individual's taste. 
obviously we have this grassed area at the front. The grass it comprises of green and yellow. So by adjusting the green and yellow sliders, we can produce our desired effect. Once again, this is very much personal choice. Once we're happy with this, we will close the black and white adjustment. The adjustment is settled uh, outside of our black and white copy. So I've moved that inside to keep everything in the same area. By clicking the uh, button on the right, we can see a before and after. We have our original color image. We have our black and white conversion. The image isn't as sharp as I would like it to be. When we're adjusting sharpness, we must be very careful that we don't introduce artifacts. So by uh, zooming in to a straight line junction between the uh, roof of the church and the sky, we can check for artifacts. There are three ways we can um, improve the sharpness of the image. We have clarity, which has already been adjusted um, in um, the raw file, and we have high pass and on sharp mask. I always like to start with high pass first. When we switch it on, we have a very grey image. We're looking for a very subtle outline to appear when we adjust the slider. We just want to see the very, very edges, edges of the detail but we don't want to see any more. To remove the greyness, we will use either soft light or overlay. I, I tend to look at them both and see what the effect is. In this case, uh, I don't think it makes a great deal of difference which one we choose. The changes are subtle, but if we switch the effect off and on, we will see a very slight improvement when the high pass is switched on. Now we will move to the on sharp mask. This is where we are most at risk of introducing artifacts, so we have to be careful in how we apply this. I nearly always work off a radius of one pixel. There doesn't tend to be any benefit of going any higher than this. And if we adjust uh, the amount, we will see the sharpening effect. If we go too high, we can see just about make out a very slight artifact appearing. So we will take this back down until we get the desired effect, maximum sharpness, but without any artifact. Adjusting the threshold um, doesn't work for me. I tend not to move that uh, at all. If we zoom back out again, we can see the overall effect. Once again, I'm moving uh, that adjustment into the black and white file so everything is together. As before, if we can click on and off, we see a before and after to ensure that we are happy with uh, the result. We have now achieved most of the changes that we uh, set out to make. We have a fine black and white image of this church, a dramatic sky, and it really is uh, quite a stunning image. However, I do like to make some other changes to create more impact and to focus our attention on the main subject matter, which is the church. Because most people read from left to right, 
It is usually best to put the main subject matter on the right hand side of the image. In this case we can do that by flipping horizontally. This now creates a, at first impression a totally different looking image but our eyes stop at the church and stop from wandering out to the side. If we look at before and after it is very much personal choice but I am happier that the church is on this side. If we go back to our analysis, we can see that we have a very dominant sky. We now want to focus our concentration on the church by putting a vignette. Vignettes should be subtle, they shouldn't be too obvious. If they're too strong, they'd look wrong, as in this case. By adjusting the sliders, we can create a softer impact to our desired taste. At this stage it is much too uh, small and the main image is too dark but if we adjust the size then we have more light in the center but we have a vignette effect around the outside. We can play about with these sliders until we get the desired effect. I do feel that the vignette is too strong on the bottom right hand corner so I am introducing a gradient filter to reduce the impact in this corner. You can see at this end the gradient filter is black which means it is removing the vignette totally which we do not want by changing the color at this end to gray at around a 50 percent black point we have a vignette effect but it is only half as strong in this corner as it is in the uh, opposite top left corner if we switch on and off we can see a before and after Vignettes should be used carefully, but by using a gradient filter, we can uh, edit them to our heart's content. Just making some final adjustments, I think the vignette is a little bit too strong, so I'm reducing the overall opacity of it by reducing it uh, to about 70%. We can see that Affinity Photo is a powerful program for converting colour images to black and white or monochrome. I hope that you have enjoyed this video from uh, Life and Camera. Please like or subscribe to our channel and please look out for future videos on Affinity Photo and many other subjects. Bye!